you know, we all sit in traffic and sometimes we all have a bad day, but have you ever had a really bad day? Have you ever seen someone go way too far? Welcome to the Film Trap Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I know we've all had bad days sitting in traffic. Uh, I live in the Los Angeles area and uh, traffic is kind of like what we deal with. Um, and road rage is something that has become so common these days. And going off of that, director Derek Bort has created the film Unhinged, starring Russell Crowe, one of my favorites. Um, Derek, I don't think I need to ask what inspired this film. <laughs> I mean, we, we've all had in traffic that, um, you know, has has frustrated us and whatnot. Um, t tell me, tell me what went into the development of this, of this project and how you got Russell Crowe involved. You know, I had met with Solstice a few times and, and they, they had seen, um, uh, American Dreamer, my last film, they liked it and, and had been talking about wanting to do something with, with me. And, and then, uh, I get a phone call saying, Hey, we found this script that we think you'd really like, and will you give it a give it a read, which I, I obviously agreed to. And, uh, here it comes unhinged and I, you know, start reading a little bit and feels like it's, you know, uh, could happen to anybody on any day of the week, just honking at the wrong guy on the, you know, wrong day. Uh, and I, then I couldn't put it down. It was just like, I had to keep turning the pages to see what was going to happen. And, and, uh, you know, it just seemed like one of these universal stories that, that just grabs you by the guts and, pulls you through this 90 minute uh, wild ride that I felt like uh, scared to death of, you know, how am I going to pull off all of these, uh, these, these stunts and car crashes and everything else. And uh, I got to do this film. So, um, you know, that's how I got involved. And then, um, and then we made the offer to Russell and, and I had a good meeting with him and he, you know, he was thinking about it, I think. And, and, um, and then he asked to watch some, another film of mine, which he did. And he called me the next day and said, you know, I, I want to do this film with you. So it just kind of took off from there. It, we, there's a kind of running joke, um, in the production team about, uh, you know, the bullet train Shinkansen. That's kind of the, the, the theme for this film is just, it just came together so quickly. We prepped it so quickly and just went to work. And really just kind of never. What um, Russell Crowe is, I mean, he's already an intense actor, right? So, but I, I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen him, you know, uh, like this in any other role he's played. So how did you get him to that place? Did you guys have discussions? He even physically looks different. I don't know if he put on weight to do it or whatever, but his physical presence is very different in this. Even the, I mean, the way he talks, he's got sort of a different kind of, kind of drawl going. Um, I, what was it like working with him and, and coming up with all of that? Well, you know, from the beginning, it was very clear just how intuitive and intelligent Russell was and, and how he really wanted to find, um, find some grounded, authentic reasons for, for this guy uh, doing some of the, um, you know, uh, some of the, the things that he's, he's doing. And, and, you know, this, this kind of um, dehumanized character needed to have some kind of a, of a, of, of a human story to, to get him to that point to where he felt like his only voice was violence and retribu retribution. Um, you know, so that part was, was, was fun, you know, just kind of diving into that with Russell and trying to figure out, you know, what kind of person do does something like this, what kind of person, uh, you know, gets to the point where they feel invisible and they feel, uh, you know, this nihilist kind of, uh, you know, lack of, belief in anything because they've been let down by the system. They feel invisible. They have no voice and they feel like uh, a huge sense of 
you know, anger that turns to rage, which turns to violence. And, and, you know, we kind of work through that process together to find that. And I think that, uh, you know, that was, that was, uh, that was exciting to go through that process with Russell. I mean, he, you know, he, he really just brings such an amazing um, tool belt and, and kind of uh toolbox of, of, of the things that he's capable of. And he just needs to have a, you know, reasoning for it. It has to feel, has to be authentic. It has to, you know, there has to be something uh, real to draw from. And I think that was, uh, that was where we started on, on really trying to figure out his character. Well, it's, it's certainly grounded in a reality, which I actually think makes it all the more frightening because there's a great, I don't want to ruin anything, but there's a great montage at the beginning of the movie where you show, I, I'm just going to say these are all real incidents because they did not look, I mean, these are just like shot on a, 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 you know, an iPhone or whatever, like various incidents where people have been involved in, you know, uh, terrible uh, circumstances where there's road rage involved people. I mean, it's so it's like all of the things that happen in the film, though, seem so over the top, but I feel like at least most of it is something that we've seen on television, unfortunately. So um, did you, I mean, the idea of putting that opening sequence together, I feel like that grounds it in a reality. Um, was that in the script or something that you brought to it? You know, I think that after watching uh, one of the early cuts, you know, we just, we kind of knew we needed something to do what you, you know, exactly what you said. And, and, uh, and Mark Gill came up with this idea of, you know, um, he's the head of the studio at Solstice, you know, it was his, his idea. And, you know, it was about trying to create something that's going to, going to kind of begin to fill in, you know, th this world that we're, we're, uh, we're creating here and, and, you know, how desensitized we've, we've, we've become to, to, you know, things that are pretty horrible in the world these days. And, and, uh, I think we, we did a good job of, uh, of accomplishing that with the, with the opening title montage for sure. Now in, in terms of the stunts, um, I mean, there are the physical stunts, but, uh, the, the, the car stuff is just in insane. Um, <laughs> in particular, a couple things involving trucks. So, what went into the planning of that and and how did you put all that together? I mean, this is like the level that you brought it to is like something maybe you'd see in a Fast and Furious movie, but you wouldn't necessarily expect it here. Yeah, with about like a you know a tenth of the budget. But uh um, you know, look, all of that starts with you know getting to go back to 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 being a seven-year-old with matchbox cars or hot wheels and just saying, like, you know, what if what if we did this and how do we do this? And you know, trying to just sort of uh, blue sky it in terms of, of, you know, we can do this with some, um, with some uh, Hot Wheels cars. So how do we make that happen in reality? And, and when you've got a great camera crew, great grip and electric and a great stunt team, you know, uh, they want to say yes to me. So they, you know, they figure out ways to say, well, we could do this. Um, you know, nobody wants to, to tell the director, no, we just can't do that. But, um, you know, everybody wants to find a way. So it's about, you know, everybody just getting to kind of just, just, you know, think if we were going to do this, what would be the coolest way we could do it? And, and, you know, I think we were able to do that with some of the, some of the, uh, the specific scenes that you're talking about. Well, in addition to that, I, I need to ask if this movie, a lot of films, because theaters are, you know, haven't fully opened yet. Um, a lot of drive-ins are open. And yeah. I, I get the feeling this is the perfect movie. I saw one of the Fast and Furious films at a drive-in and it was one of the best experiences ever because you're sitting in a car. Will this be opening in drive-ins? I assume it will. Um, but I cannot recommend a movie enough to see in a drive-in than Unhinged. I mean, it, yeah. it will uh, add yeah. to the experience. Yeah, you know, I think we're we're going to be in a uh, hopefully all 300 drive-ins in America is is what I'm I'm being told. But um, that was something that I always thought. You know, I remember as a kid going to see. Um, I think I may have even seen like you know Cannonball Run in a drive-in or something like that. But um, 
but it felt like a drive in movie to me. And when, you know, I heard that we were, we were going to be opening up a lot of the drive ins with the film and that, I mean, I'm, that's where I want to go see it is at a drive in. So, um, you know, if, if, we get there and, and uh, you know, or when we get there and theaters are deemed safe to open and, and the film opens, the first place I'm going to go is, uh, is, a, is the closest drive in to check it out. I mean, it, it, it's, it, there's not a better film to see in the drive in than a movie that uh, involves this. Uh, I want to thank our sponsor storyblocks, go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. If you want to be a filmmaker like Derek Bord. This is this is where you start with tools for filmmakers. I want to thank you, Derek Bort, for coming on the Film Threat Podcast and talking to us about Unhinged today. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's also very intense, and uh, stuff's going to blow your mind. So thank you for talking to us today. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me. I I, uh, I was excited to uh, to do these kind of things, and and I like your thinking with the drive-in. <laughs> movie man that's really the key for unhinged is big screen you got to see it on a big screen somewhere you got to see it on the big screen and rather than applause what i notice people do at the drive-in because i've been going lately is they haunt the horn that they haunt the horn and they flash their lights that's how they that's how they you know express their approval so i hope there's a lot of honking during the film <laughs> thanks thanks a lot derek take care appreciate it thanks for having me cool 